Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Acoustic Silk Show. With us today, we've got a very, very special guest. One of my good friends in life actually here. But uh, he's an attorney and he has agreed to come onto the show. And he's attorney Mark Gray. And he's had a lot of uh, interesting work that he's been doing in the music industry lately. So I wanted to bring him on and have him talk to you guys about that and provide as much value as he can. And today specifically, we're gonna be talking about contracts. So welcome to the show, Mark. Hey, Kai, you know, good to see you, man. Appreciate you inviting me onto the show. Um, you know, looking forward to providing any sort of information that I can. Um, again, thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you so much for spending this time. So before we go ahead and get into it, I'd like to let you get an opportunity to uh, provide some of your information, maybe your email address, phone number, that people can like reach out to you if they have any uh, questions regarding to this interview or if they uh, want to get some of your consulting services uh, with them. So you have that information? Yeah, I mean, uh, probably the best way to just get a quick contact, the most simple way is probably just go to my website, markvlgrade2number2.com. And I'll also make sure to give Kai, you know, my contact information. He could probably put it in the um, description. You know, the description part of the, the page. So, but yeah, the easiest way probably to visit my website, markvlgrade2.com. And, uh, you know, just contact me through there and, you know, we can get started. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, I'll also put that in the uh, on overlay on the video too. So you've been, pra you've been a practicing attorney for a while now. Can you go ahead and give a little short bio so people know a little bit more about you, what, you, what you're about and what you do on a day-to-day? -day? Yeah, I mean, the, uh, my predominant practice is not, it's not predominantly in, in the music industry. It predominantly revolves around personal injury, um, a little bit of civil criminal matters, um, but I do have a, a passion for, you know, sports and entertainment. Um, and obviously music is the main part of that entertainment and contracts is a big part of that. And, you know, as a result, me having a passion in it, me having a knowledge in it and um, some experience in it as well, you know, I do offer those type services. Uh, but a, a normal day, I mean, honestly, we probably start out in court, um, you know, have to, you know, chop it up with the DAs, you know, every now and then have to go in front of a judge, you know, just move cases. After that, hopefully around noon, I'm, I'm back in the office doing uh, more civil work, more office work. Okay. And, um, you know, and that's kind of where the um, entertainment part of my practice comes into play is, you know, in the office side of things. All right. So dig, digging more into digging more in depth there, what kind of stuff have you been involved with in the music industry? Um, I know you've you've had some interaction with my channel in the past just because me like sending you stuff to listen to. So obviously we have a lot of up and coming artists that either listen to my channel or uh, submit music to be featured on the channel. So I'm, I'm really structuring this interview for them to provide as much value for them as possible. So, right. you know, what, what kind of stuff have you been doing in the music industry? Yeah, I mean, the major function that any attorney can really do, especially you know, it kind of depends. If you want your attorney to act as just that, an attorney, or if you really expect him to be more, him or her to be more of an agent type um, type role. At currently, you know, as I pointed out, I'm you know pretty busy with the other areas of practice that I do. Um, so it's kind of at this point of, of my career, it's difficult to be a, a full on agent. Um, so the primary, um, you know, service that I do, or at least have done recently, is contractual work. I review contracts, help people negotiate their contracts so that they ultimately can get the best deal for them. Um, a lot of times, there, there a lot of times there's, you know, standard contract language, you know, of course that's going to be included, but at the end of the day, you know, amount of money, percentages, you know, a lot of that stuff can be negotiated. So I try to, you know, especially, you know, when a manager or an artist, they have a, a client or, you know, the artist is the client they just want to help negotiating their contract and, and want somebody to look over it and make sure they're not signing a, a bad deal. Um, you know, especially in such a, when they're starting out, that's a, you know, a make or break period for them. So it's very important for them to, you know, have someone to kind of look out for them. Of course, I was just, you know, looking on before, before we got started here about the whole like Lil Wayne Birdman situation and how Lil Wayne, you know, finally got free from that deal. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, maybe that could a whole situation could have been avoided if he had the right attorneys looking over that deal in the beginning. Um, so, you know, 
like you said, a lot of times artists in the early stage of their careers end up signing bad deals that can hamper their career for a long period of time. And not, they not even realize it until later on down the line when they are trying to make a move or do something, you know, better their lives in that way. So from your perspective, how, how should an artist look for an attorney or like what makes a good attorney? How can they vet an attorney for it to, you know, help them? Um, I would probably say the, the first thing is finding an attorney who, you know, you believe to be straightforward. I think a lot of times in our industry, you can kind of get a feel for when someone is kind of a BS or just the, the way they talk, how they interact with you, that ultimately they're just trying to get you on the door just because you're a client in general and that you prospectively might pay the money. But at the end of the day, I mean, you should, you know, try to use your, I, I guess, common sense ability to, to determine whether or not someone sounds as if they're trying to look out for you and i, and I think um, that's the first step then you want somebody who might have a passion for it or at least you know has had experience or has interest in it that way you know they're trying to perfect their craft as well mm -hmm. obviously when i'm doing this type of work you know i'm i'm trying to get better at the same time so so you know obviously i'm gonna take a little bit more time or a little bit more effort to make sure that i can do it as best as possible rather than someone who you know is just you know, another client, they're just trying to, you know, make money and push another case through or push another, um, you know, transaction through, you know, just get a feel for that. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's also somewhat important if the, um, the attorney, I'm not saying that it's necessary, but it is probably beneficial if they have an interest in the type of music that you make, um, you know, uh, so you know, long story short, or just ultimately, I, I just think that finding someone who is engaged in the work that you're that you're bringing to them and actually wants to do that work. And, you know, you can tell when people are asking questions about what you're looking for, they're probably helping you out. If they just tell you what the fee is, you know, you show up, you show up and reserve a time, you know, then they're probably just looking at you as a transaction. So that's, that's a good point there. That's a good point. Um, so you mentioned earlier about you know, negotiating deals, bet, like making sure that the artist has the best deal, best deal, or I guess the best deal on the table for both parties involved. Right. So, what in your in your uh, experience would make the best deal, or or how how can an artist know that they're signing a good deal? Well, I think the and I've on the most recent one, I was working on one um, last Friday. I'm a, a young artist, her and her manager. Um, you know, wanted a contract, looked over before an investor and, and production company started putting her out there. And one of the main things I wanted her to be aware of was that, you know, contracts, they have durations, usually two to three or five years is the contract term. But a lot of times they don't have a termination clause. And the termination clause is important because it, it can really say anything it, it wants. And, that, and that's actually kind of just like a contract 101 whatever you sign is, is what the contract is. I mean, the contract could be, you know, on every Thursday, you make me a PB and J you signed it. That's what you gotta do every Thursday. Right. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, <laughs> it, the contract can be as, as stupid or as complex as it, as anything, as long as you, you know, willfully signed it, you know, that that's contract. So you just have to make sure that you add stuff that protects you. Cause if you're an artist, you're young, you're, you're, you know, starting out, trying to build your career, trying to build your name, you know, you opportunities are incredibly important for you. If you've got someone who's supposed to be promoting you, who, you know, doesn't really seem to be bringing you opportunities, it's not helping you to be locked into a contract for three years if you've only gotten, you know, like one Chuck E. Cheese performance <laughs> in, in that time, you know? It's, 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 so you gotta have something like that to, to put into the contract so that, you know, if you're not satisfied with the work, or with your opportunities or you're not just getting any opportunities at all you can leave you can walk obviously there's going to be you know some notice you got to maybe give a month notice saying i'm not happy and maybe give them the opportunity to you know correct those things but you know little things like that are important because you know whether it's an athlete and a sponsorship deal or an artist and a promotion deal or you know anything they need to have the ability to walk if they're not getting anything out of it. Um, okay. So that's a major thing that I look for. Um, but a lot of times it's it's standard language. 
you just want to make sure that little things like that um you know what all that they're providing if it is a company that's being you know financially um beneficial for you i think for example they're paying for flights paying for um you know making sure that your your appearance is on point get your hotel everything i mean you got to make sure that they actually do it every time um so i think another thing is that really people who perhaps are in a, a difficult position or maybe not even difficult but more so uh what's the word i'm looking for they're uh, i mean difficult's fine they're desperate really is the word i'm looking for desperate yeah. Yeah, and so as a result, they're like, "No, I'm just going to make this work," and they don't really think about the options that they have available to them. Um, and a lot of times, there's a breach of contract, and people really don't know that once there's a breach, you know, you're not obligated to perform under the contract anymore. Right. Okay. Interesting point there. Um, how long does this whole process take? I mean, so if is like a manager have like a contract and they bring it to you for you to look over or are you making them from scratch? Like, can you provide a little light on how that typically works? Yeah. Well, I mean, I've, I've done both. Um, you know, I've done contracts between managers and artists, you know, it's cause they need to obviously, um, cause a lot of times the companies, the production companies, record companies, they just have a contract with the artist and they're in no way, um, obligated to the manager. So the manager and the artist have to have a, also have to have a contract right, so that okay. there so that there's a, bo a bond between them as well a legal bond okay um, but so I, i've done them both where i've created contracts and then ones where the companies provide one someone says hey i want you to read it over before i sign it you know perhaps change a few things that are more in my favor so i mean it really just depends on on what they're looking for or if, if they've you know collaborated with someone who already has provided them with the contract okay um, can you, all right. So is there, is there a difference is like one better than the other or that, you know, just basically same thing pretty much. I mean, I, I would definitely say a scratch from scratch is better because it's really everything that, um, you, the two parties can perhaps have a meeting all at the same time with the attorney, um, and go over the things that they want included. And we can kind of talk them out from the beginning. Whereas if it's a contract that's already provided, you know, the person who, who initiated the contract might be a stickler for certain points and, and not doesn't want to budge on certain things. So it's definitely better if it's from scratch, obviously, you know, because you can really create it how you want it. It's going to be tailor-made then. Correct. Okay. Um, so like, you know, different artists are in different phases of their career, you know, when when should an artist really look out to an attorney to help to help them? Is there a specific timeline you you're, you give artists, or I mean, have you even told people like, hey, you probably don't need a contract right now before? Or, well, yeah, I, actually, the same one I was working on yet the other day. Um, you know, the manager was asking me about a retainer, whether or not I, she should retain my services um, for you know later um, work she might need for me to do for. Her. Okay, but I told her she shouldn't. She shouldn't put me on a retainer because they're at the building stage and in, in, in the building stage, you know, it's really not that important that the attorney is looking at stuff. Because usually you just have one contract with the company and they're the ones also acting as your promoter. Once you become more of a star and you've got maybe small endorsements or, or large endorsements or um, people trying to ask you to do more events, that's when the attorney might be more beneficial because there's more stuff to look at. When you're building, it's really the artist and you know their talent, their relentless pursuit of you know achieving their goal, mm -hmm. and you know just the music speaking for itself. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's beneficial for them to have an attorney on retainer if you know they're not really able to utilize those services yet, because obviously the first step is you know becoming a star, and at that point, that's when you want the attorney to help you remain a star or, or maintain the star because you know once you become a star there's so many more things involved with your career that you do need somebody else's help but at this point you know if you're just starting out you just want to go out there perform draw in fans um you know put put out as much music as you can obviously good music and and just hope that the you know that your fan base builds and, and your 
um, name just continues to grow. Okay, that's a, that's that's a fair point. Um, obviously, you know, you're you you had to go to school for this. You've had to have you know lots of practice of this. So I'm sure your services aren't cheap. So for those artists that, you know, are coming up in the game, you know, a lot of these people are working, you know, two jobs at once, you know, making music off their laptop, um, got a cheap mic, uh, you know, downloading so software off Pirate Bay and using that to crank out music. Uh, yeah. So these people aren't exactly rolling in money yet, <laughs> but they but they may want to, uh, you know, have have some representation or, you know, have something down in, in contract form. How much can these services often cost? Can you give us a range? You don't have to say like you know your exact price unless you want to, but can you give us like some ranges of how much these services can cost? Um, I mean, for most of these type of things, especially contract, people charge by the hour. Um, you know, with, with some cases, a personal injury case, it'll be a contingency fee. With you know, if it's a traffic ticket, it's just a flat fee. Usually, for contract stuff, it's by the hour. You know the amount of time i spend reviewing the contract editing um you know and whether or not you keep sending me more and more to look at um each correction when the other person sends something back so really it's just time and you know it, it the hourly rate could really just depends on lawyers i would probably say um on the lower end 200 on the higher end you know you might have people charging 800 to a thousand an hour um oh so you said just, 100 200 an hour yeah, I would say low end is two hundred an hour, um, okay, and high end, you know, thousand an hour. Um, those are probably the some of the top dogs. Okay, so so we're saying it takes probably like a few hours for this for this to get done. So maybe yeah, yeah maybe yeah, like yeah. four or five hundred, six hundred dollars on the low end. Is yeah, that what we're I mean, talking. Yeah, I mean, if it's six page contract, I mean, you know, we us lawyers. We had to read a lot in school, so we, we can read fast. And that's really what it comes down to is you learn specific contractual language in law school. Okay. Um, so really, when it comes to years and years of experience, that comes more into the negotiation phase because you learn the words in school. Okay. And you, it's not like you just you don't really uh, reread the definitions of those words every year. Right. Um, so once you know what it means, you know what it means and you know what to look for. And, you know, but I would say experience comes more into play when it comes to actually negotiating the contract, and not necessarily um, reviewing and understanding what it what it's really saying. Okay, excellent. Yeah, just just what, I always like putting a price on things, so people to kind of know what they're getting into here. Um, you know, if they need to like save up to have this done or anything like that. Um, but I'm sure you know once once it comes down to that, I mean, who's really paying for this? Is the artist the the label, the manager, who, who's really paying for this? Maybe both? Um, generally speaking, it would be the manager. Um, but it could be the artist. It really depends on where the artist is at. I mean, if they can afford a manager, then, you know, the manager would probably pay that cost. Um, but a lot, it, it really just depends. Um, I've had artists, I've had producers, you know, come in and they had a contract with the production company that wanted them to be a producer for them and he just wanted to know how much he was getting in the royalties and you know was he able to work with other artists or other companies little things like that um it, it really just depends based on the um the type of contract and you know what all is involved and, um so it can kind of depend but it's, it's definitely not a long process it, it, unless the contract is long i mean really the the length is what it is um so i don't know if that really answered the question but yeah um are there any common themes that you've noticed between all all the work you've done that maybe like artists typically want in their contract or maybe like the other side like the companies want in their on their side of the contract well obviously the most important part is the cut you know uh, who, right? what, what percentage uh, am i getting what percentage is the company getting um and I think, you know, most people are aware of in music, um, you know, the, the company, the, the record company usually makes most of the money on CD sales. Right. Um, and I guess in, in today's world on streams, um, whereas the artist usually makes most of the money in performances. Right. So um, 
you know, that's really the, the main thing that people are concerned about. But a, as I brought up earlier, you know, they're also concerned about if they can walk, if, you know, that's not working out for them. Um, so that, uh, I would also say another thing people look, you know, try to add is the ability to work with other people. Um, you know, it's, it's, people don't want to be limited in their growth. Right. But obviously the... Um, you know, the more outside opportunities could be perhaps um, intimidating to the companies because they don't necessarily have full control of you know the artist and their image. So I mean, it it mostly just comes down to the freedom and and the money. Okay, that's fair. Um, that's that's what it is, man. I I think that pretty much covers it. What I have for you on contracts. Is there any last things you want to say? about contracts maybe um you know some things artists want to think about before they you know think about getting it getting a contract or anything like that um you know I, I would just say that it's it's important to be realistic with where you're at um when you're just starting you know you really just need to be on the grind getting your music out there getting your name out there getting your image out there um, you know, whether that's through social media, through through posting stuff on YouTube, to having an account through um, iTunes and people able to stream your stuff through Apple. Um, regardless of the platform, you just got to get that out there. You got to get your name out there, get attention towards yourself. And, um, you know, the rest will come. You know, I, I think the best way um, I can think about it or compare it would actually be with sports. You know, a lot of times you'll see an athlete who's not necessarily the best, but they might be on a team that, that's winning, Right. you know, and, and as a result, now they have new endorsement opportunities just because they're winning, even if they're not that great. Um, so at the same time, put yourself in a place to win and the, the other opportunities will, will come to you. Don't force it because when you force, I think when you force things um, before it's ready, it, it just doesn't work out, Right. you know. Um, one of the best, of, some of the best advice that my mom gave me, and you know, me being an ambitious person, my mom had to always bring me back down, saying, you know, it doesn't all happen at once. Um, and I think the same thing could go could be said for for artists, um, producers, managers, you know, everybody in the music industry. Um, you know, it's important that they allow things to happen naturally. But of course, you know, like you said, they might be uh, working a couple jobs or. You know doing this or that on the side just to make it of course they're you know trying to get it done of course but but you know don't don't rush it because sometimes you try to do it too soon and people aren't ready for it and, and people don't support it so put put your name out there you know grind get the music out there get music sounding as good as possible and you know if it sticks it sticks there it is mark can you give your uh contact information one one last time just in case people didn't catch it the first time around um, yeah 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 i mean uh the website to go to go look at some information um about myself is mark bl gray 2.com that's the number two um you can email me at mark at mark bl gray 2.com um and those are probably the best ways to get in contact with me and again like i said i'll make sure that that kai over here has has all that information available for you all all right Thank you once again. And they can schedule some time with you on that website also? Uh, I mean, it, I don't know if there's a, the capability of selecting a time, at least not on that website. I do have a, a legal website, um, but that's a little bit kind of separate from the entertainment side. But okay. um, yeah, I mean, they can certainly, we can go back and forth and then figure out a good time to meet or whether it's through, through Skype or FaceTime or in person if they're, if they're in North Carolina. I'm, I'm in North Carolina attorney um, based out of Charlotte. So, you know, I, I'm more than ha happy to help anybody who's, who's looking for some help. And like I said, it's an area that I'm interested in too. So, you know, I'm, I'm also helping myself when, when I, you know, I'm able to do the work for them. All right. Anyone over the, anyone all over the country can reach out to you. R please do. Okay. Please do. Baby, you gonna put it on my face. Do it.